In this tutorial video, we are going to take a look at how we can use the toolpath tiling options when working with a design that is larger than our machine's working area, or to help us in a situation where the material we have available is smaller than the design. For this video, we are going to use this file of a Howling Wolf InSign to demonstrate using the tiling toolpath options. So now that we have the project open, if you look in the bottom left hand corner, you can see the job dimensions. This project has a width of 72 inches and a height of 48 inches. This project size is going to be much larger than the average CNC machine that most people will be using. And as such, a design like this would be impossible to carve out in a single piece on those machines. This is where we can use the toolpath tiling option, which allows us to cut this into smaller sections on our machine to put them back together piece by piece to create the final design. So let's switch on the double view and then we can switch over to the toolpath tab here. You can then see the list of toolpaths for this project. So if we run a toolpath preview to show you what this design looks like. So if I maximize it here so we can get a good look, you can see here how this project will cut. You can see that it is made up of a series of pockets which are then followed by a profile toolpath using a V-bit to give the text a beveled edge and then a profile toolpath along the edge of the sign to give us the final piece. From here we can double click the material in the background to remove it so we can see what the sign would look like. This is going to be much larger than the hypothetical 24 inch by 24 inch machine that I have. I wouldn't be able to cut this out normally on our machine. So now if we close out of the toolpath preview, I'm gonna switch over to the double view so we can see the 2D view and 3D view again. And we're going to click on the tile toolpath option here. So now let's have a look at the different options you have in the toolpath tiling manager. First, you want to make sure that you have the tile toolpaths option selected. So we will select this here. And you can see we have three different options to tile the toolpath here. So the first option here you can see is individual tiles. The individual tiles option here is mainly for when you want to have a large project which overlaps your machine in both the X and Y direction and the material you are using on the machine is going to be smaller sections of the whole project. The next two options, the feed through in X and feed through in Y option, both work in the same way in that they allow you to create longer projects than your machine can support, but only if your project's other axis is no larger than the machine axis of that same side. So for example, if you were feeding through in X, your X axis could be larger than the machine axis, but you'd need to make sure that the Y axis is within the limit of your machine. Same with feed through Y. You could feed the material through the Y axis, but you'd need to make sure that the X axis was within the limit of the machine. For the feed through in X and feed through in Y options as well, you would need to make sure that the machine is set up in such a way that you would be able to feed the plank of material along that axis unobstructed by any of the machine's physical hardware. So for example, if you wanted to make a wide banner, but the machine you were using is set up in such a way that you would not be able to feed the material through the X axis, but you are able to feed it through the Y axis, you would need to make sure the project was set up at a 90 degree angle, so you are able to feed the material along the Y axis of the machine. To learn more about tiling projects where we are just feeding through one axis, please take a look at the Toolpath Tiling 3D tutorial video. The example we use is only applicable to the VCarve and Aspire software. However, the principle is still applicable for TD projects. But for this example, we're going to be using the individual tiles option. 
So if we look at the other settings we have available in the Toolpath Tiling Manager, you can see here we have the tile width and the tile height. So here you can set the size of the tiles you want to use. And then the next option here is the tile overlap. I will be coming back to this setting later on in the video. And then the next section here is the machine smallest tile first. So if we set the tile width to 20 by 20 here and update the tiles here, you can see here that tile one, tile two, tile three, tile five, tile six and tile seven are the full 20 by 20 inches. But there are some tiles on the edge that aren't the full tile size due to the material that is left. You can see here that these tiles have been left till last. If we select the machine smallest tile first and update these tiles, you can see now that the smallest tiles are run first. We will not be using this in this example, so I'm going to turn this off. And for the example that I'm currently going to use, I'm going to set this to 24 by 24 inches to match the machine I am going to use. And for now, we're going to set the tile overlap to zero. So if I update this, you can now see that we have six tiles that can be seen here in the 2D view. Tile one, tile two, tile three, tile four, tile five, tile six. So if we go to the next setting here, we can see the delete all tiling data. If we click this, it will reset the tiling data that we are using. Next is the toolpath drawing. So currently the active tile is six. So if we go back to tile one and go back into the toolpath preview, reset the toolpath preview and show all the toolpaths you can now see that it is only showing the toolpaths for the first tile in the 3D view. So you can see here we have the draw toolpaths in original position for visualization selected. This will show the original position for the toolpaths compared to the overall project. So if we set this now to tile two, so now I've selected the active tile as tile two. You can see now that the toolpaths that are shown in the 3D view are the tile two toolpath and that they are shown in the original position of the project we have designed. So if we unselect this option, you can see that the toolpaths move to the lower left corner closer to the XY date and position set here. So this is now showing the position of the toolpaths as it will cut out on the machine as we're cutting each tile out separately. Now if we run a toolpath preview for this tile, so I'm going to make all toolpaths visible, then select the preview visible toolpaths. So now if we look at the toolpath preview of tile 2, and zoom into this area here, you can see here we don't quite have as clean a cut on the W here. And we have this rounded off area, whereas I would expect it to have a much cleaner straight line cut through this area. The reason that this is happening is that the tool has not got enough room to run the tool path over the edge of the tile to give it a clean finish. This is where the tile overlap setting here comes in handy. So this will allow you to add a, a distance that the toolpath can overlap the edge of the tile. So for this example, if we enter in 0 0.25 inches, select update tile, reset the preview, make sure that we have tile two activated still, select all the toolpaths and preview the visible toolpaths. You can now see if we zoom into this area again of the toolpath, 
that we get a much cleaner cut which will help for when we line up these tiles next to each other to make sure there is a clean edge to the tool paths for the lettering when lining each tile up. So now that we've looked through the different settings in the toolpath tiling manager, we are now going to look at saving toolpaths for this project. I'm going to reset the preview and close out of the preview and then go into the save toolpath option. So for this, we're going to select the visible toolpaths to multiple files option here and we're going to group where possible. Now you can see here that we have the output tiled toolpaths option here selected. This will be selected as default if you are creating a tiled project. So next we will need to select the post processor we're going to use to save the toolpaths out. So for this example, we're going to use the Gerbil post processor, but you will want to use the correct post processor for your machine. For more information on how to add the correct post processor for your machine, I would recommend watching the how to set up your machine configuration tutorial video. I'm now going to use this option here to select all the toolpaths in the file. So now I'm going to just check the toolpaths to be saved list to make sure that all the toolpaths that we want to be saved are listed here. This looks correct. And now I'm going to save the toolpath. So now we will want to create a name for the toolpaths we are going to save. So for this, I'm just going to call it the, I'm going to call it toolpath tiling and I'm going to click save here. So now if we open the file, we have just saved the toolpaths to in our file explorer on the computer. You can see here that the toolpaths all have T1, T2, T3, T4, and T5 and T6 in front of them. So this indicates which toolpaths are for which tiles. So all the toolpaths with T1 in front of them will we need to use to cut out the first tile and T2 for the second tile. So you would need to run all the T1 toolpaths for the first tile you were cutting out and then all the T2 toolpaths for the second tile and for each tile you were cutting. Then once you have cut out each tile individually, you can then glue all these tiles together to create the final piece. So I can see here that we have six toolpaths for each of these tiles. So we're now going to have a look at trying to optimize the toolpaths so there are less toolpath files for each tile. So I'm going to delete these. So now if we go back to the save toolpaths option here, we can see here that the pocket two clearance toolpath, the pocket one clearance toolpath and the pocket three clearance toolpath all use the same half inch end mill. So if we use this option here in the toolpaths list to move these toolpaths so they are next to each other, this means that it will save these toolpaths all to one file, which will create a more efficient toolpath for us. This will make cutting on the machine more efficient as this will create one file instead of two. So now if we save the toolpaths, And again, have a look at the toolpath saved in this file now. So as you can see here now, we have less toolpaths per tile to cut, which will hopefully make the cutting on the machine more efficient. I hope you have found this tutorial video helpful on toolpath tiling, where we have gone through how to split a larger project down to smaller tiles using the toolpath tiling to allow you to cut larger projects on a smaller machine and also how to save tiled toolpaths in the software.